Good afternoon, Radio Milwaukee Land. I'm Dori Zori. Welcome, studio audience. Welcome, Facebook. And welcome, listeners. Playing tonight at Company Brewing is one of my favorite local bands, Reina. They're here to play a couple songs for us, so can we give them a nice, warm welcome? Take it away, friends. Radio Milwaukee, you're listening to a live session from our Mindpool live stage with Raina.
Welcome, Raina, back to Studio Milwaukee. It's nice to have you here. Thank How long has guys. it been since you played? A long oh, time. I don't even <laughs> <Has it? laughs> We're so happy to be back, though. Yeah, thanks for coming. There's a show tonight going on at Company Brewing. One of the reasons why you had we had you back today. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But for the people out there that might be listening that aren't as familiar with your origin story, uh, let's start. How did you meet? Wink. <laughs> we met when I was born. Because <laughs> I'm younger. So you're just so calling out I Vic came right away. And I made Vic's life much better. <laughs> you did. <laughs> All right, tell us the, the beginnings of your musical career, though. Were you guys, I picture you, wee little, putting on shows in the living room. I'm actually, I'm wearing a Selena shirt right now. And when I was a kid, she was like, she still is my idol. Like, I love her. Um, I used to p get on the fireplace and like dance and sing like Selena. So ever since then, I've just wanted to be a singer, musician, all that. Nice. Oh, and what were you doing, Vic, while she was singing and dancing on the fireplace? I was just watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, how can I support my sister's dreams? She was playing with a soccer ball. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how could I make it look cooler? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. All right, and Milwaukee, you haven't always called Milwaukee home, but it's been a while now, right? Yes, Milwaukee definitely is home now. Yeah, we've been here for nine years. We is love it. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out, because your first music that you're putting out was still, uh, or was like 2011-ish? 2012. 2012. Was, uh, Bridges and Guns, our first EP. You did an EP, and that was back when putting out albums and EPs were more of how people were consuming stuff, but now... People like singles, and you've been doing a really good job of dropping new singles on us like every six months. <laughs> How's the writing process changed instead of going into a studio, crafting that album, to putting out singles instead? Well, I think it's we can focus on one song, and we don't have to like think about it all working together, even though we've actually been able to create a sound that I think works together. Um, but, I mean, I personally like singles because you can just like get into the studio, write an, a song, and you get so excited about it, and you can't wait to um, release it. And then when you get back, it's like, it just keeps it super fresh and exciting. Instead of getting in the studio and like working on an album for six months, and it just kind of gets like very, it, like drags on, you know? So we, we love to record new music and just be excited about it and put everything we have into this one song and all of our focus. How do songs usually start for you? Is it with a melody? Is it with lyrics? Do you hear the percussion first ever? It just it depends on the song. Like sometimes it could be, for example, magazines, it was just a piano. And we were very sad. <laughs> we were sitting in like, at, it was a bedroom studio. And we were sitting on this um, woman's bed. Is that it was we were, we worked with a woman. Um, she was she's she's amazing. Yeah, she's awesome. She's a female producer, and um, it was just the piano, and that was the first time we had ever done that, and it was very hard, but it was so rewarding. So then your songs end up being these little snapshots of what you were doing at your life in the time, because they come one at a time now instead of in a big group. Yes, that's pretty cool. Can we go back to the female producer situation? Because we just wrote an article, Nicole, uh, one of our new digital. Um, staff members wrote an article about how female producers are on the rise and the struggles that they have. Grace Weber contributed some really great thoughts to that article. Uh, how is it different working with a female producer? Well, I mean, we, we've we only worked with men. The only woman that we've worked with was for magazines, and it was a complete, you know, different vibe. Everyone... I mean, I guess you're you're more open because you're not gonna be judged, or you're not trying to prove yourself to a man who's you know greater than you. <laughs> like Do you that. even have to feel like when you're in the studio, you have to dress or look a certain way when it's when I mean, you're being judged? I think we've been very lucky. We've worked with, like you said, men, but mostly men. But they they have all been so amazing, and they've all treated us like they care about what we think about all of our ideas, we've never really encountered someone who's like, oh, I don't like that, or, you know. We've encountered that more playing live shows. Like, when we were, when we would play as Vic and Gab, we would show up to, a sh <laughs> to shows, and people would be like, oh, I thought you were Vic and Gabe. So they we thought it was like two boys. guys, <laughs> yes. And then they'd be like, oh, and you guys are girls, and you're so short. <laughs> wow, you're really good at looking at stuff. <laughs> or they'd be like, 
um, they would make fun, not, they would comment on how my bass was too big for me. Which is now why you got a, a Which is why bass. I ended up getting a smaller bass. You should get bigger basses. <laughs> I know. Forget that. <laughs> you show them what you can do with the biggest bass. But I was, I mean, it was, it was fun though, because I personally love to prove myself. I love to be like, oh yeah, I'm just a little girl, I can't do anything. And then I'm like, yeah. just kidding. It's worth <laughs> some clapping, for sure. And that's kind of why I brought it up, because I feel like there's some common struggles, and there's a lot of young female musicians on the rise, and they're going to run into this stuff, and I think it's important for them to hear stories of people that they might look up to that have gone through it, and that, hey, it's, it's not that bad. And if you get the right people to work with, it's not even an issue anymore. Yeah, I, I believe that most of the world is very nice and kind. It's like few people who ruin it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you just, you have to believe in yourself and also believe in other people, that they're going to help you, you know? That's, that's what we try to do. That's a delightful way to look at the world. That's how I do as well, too. So um, are you interested at all in learning more of the production end of making your music? I mean, Gab is a full-time producer. I mean, she, we, she records all of our demos that we send to producers, and most of the ideas, you know, stay in the songs. So, I mean, I think that she's... I'm not as good with production, um, but Gab is really good. So I, I think that she has, you know, a future in that, if th this doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like me, Vic. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you. <laughs> so how has that production um, changed with the like advancements in technology and just the short time that you've been producing and making music? Is it easier now for you to produce your own stuff? Uh, I started on my iPad with GarageBand. So now I have like Logic Pro, you know, my a computer. So fancy. It's so, <laughs> I know, it, it, it's not even that fancy, but Sounds for me fancy. it is. Um, but, I mean, there's so much out there that can help you be a producer, um, you know, help you write songs. It's, I mean, there's, like... And you can look up, at, like, on YouTube and just do, like, a little, you know, like, show me how to do, like, copy-paste or whatever. Yeah, I think the, the key is to not be afraid, you know? It's, like, I, I personally don't think that what I do, my, the demos that I record are that great, but I'm not afraid to show them to people. <laughs> I think you, you shouldn't be afraid. Great advice. Great advice. So you are joined uh, by a live drummer who you go on tour with, Patrick. Any, yes. any fun facts that anyone needs to know about him? Yes. He is from L.A. And earlier today when we were unloading the truck, he's he was like, I don't think I've seen snow in, like, years. <laughs> <laughs> were you like catching snowflakes on your tongue outside? <laughs> that's kind of precious. That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. He was like, I hate he this. He hates it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're about to go out on a tour. We'll talk about that in a second. But a show tonight at Company Brewing with uh, one of our other favorites, Siren. How did that show come about? Well, we wanted to do a, an all-female lineup, um, Girl Power. Um, so I just hit her up on social media, and she was very responsive and was super pumped to do it. And uh, we're so excited to hang out with her tonight and, you know, it's going to be a great night. Doors are at 10. Yes. Company Brewing in River West. You can find out more information on our website. Um, if you could tour with any female outside of Milwaukee, what would your dream, like, double bill be? You, Raina, and who? Um, I would love to tour with Grimes or Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Vic? Uh, Grimes would be cool. And um, I really love the band Now Now. <laughs> I love them. Um, I, w I saw them at Cactus Club like years ago, and I've been following their, you know, career, and I just, I love their music, so I would love to tour with them. Sweet. And where is this new tour of yours taking you? We're doing Chicago, Minneapolis, Minneapolis and Kansas City with Coast Modern. Ooh, that's a really fun, that's a fun double bill. Yes. All right, before Dance we... Dance party. Dance party, right? All about it. I wore my sparkles today because I thought you were going to be sparkly. But um, we're saving them for later. All right, cool. All right, here's my last question before you play one more song. Uh, what did your childhood smell like? And you have to answer individually. Even um, though you grew up at the same time, pretty much. I'm going to say coffee. 
my my grandpa used to give us coffee in our bottles. Like I started drinking coffee when I was like 10 months. I swear he loved us. He didn't mean to. He wasn't trying to harm us. And I, I swear this is why we're so short. It's science. I mean, I think I would say cleaning supplies because our mom is insanely clean. And like to this day, I, I, I can't, sometimes I'm just like, ugh, I can't stand that smell because it reminds me of like getting in trouble when I was little. It's like, take your shoes off. You know, so out like of that. the two of you, Gab, who's cleaner, you or Vic? Probably Vic. <laughs> <laughs> she knows it. <laughs> On that fascinating note, you guys want to hear one more song? <laughs> All right. Take it away, Raina. Thank you guys for being here. Give it up for Raina. What a delight. 
They're playing tonight at Company Brewing with Siren. Doors open at 10 p.m. Tickets still available at the door. Thanks to our partner Stone Creek Coffee and uh, Company Brewing in River West. Also, thanks to Lodi for engineering. Give it up for him, making everyone sound great. Thanks to Transfer Pizzeria Cafe, who's throwing a pizza party for you upstairs. And most importantly, thank you, members. Without your support, we couldn't do sessions like this. And it's nice to see so many people here on a Friday afternoon. And uh, I got to say, we're going to have a members-only song. So let's say goodbye to Facebook and on air. Throwing it back to you, Marcus. <laughs>